Hey guys, welcome to Toy Shop. Today we're doing a top end on a Yamaha Moto 4 200. All right, so we got the plastics off right here. We got the gas tank off. We're gonna probably start by ripping the carb off and the exhaust. So there's a bolt here that goes to a plate and on the, the other side, there's two bolts on that plate. So we're gonna pop this motor mount out and then we're gonna take those two bolts out to get that plate out of the way because we're gonna need some room for this to come up once we get there. I think I'm gonna pop this intake boot off just for room and then we're gonna get this timing chain tensioner loosened up and broke loose and then we're gonna pop this cover off. That was loose already. All right, this is a big wrench. This is a 24. Might back that out a little bit. All right, let's pop this air boot off. I'm using a ball nose Allen wrench for this just because you gotta get in there at an angle. All right, my little O-ring's stuck to the head, so make sure you don't lose that. I don't know if we're gonna reuse that or not. That looks kinda, kinda ugly. All right, we're gonna take this timing cover off now. All right, so we're gonna pop this bolt off the cam, and then we're gonna get this sprocket slid down and out of the chain. We're just gonna let the chain fall down to the bottom. We'll fish it out later once we get the cylinder off, but I wanna get this unhooked. All right, I wouldn't abuse this, but we're just gonna try to get it to break free quick. Now it looks like there's a key in here. I don't know if that stays with the cam or not yet, but I've got this chain adjuster backed way out. So this is not a manual chain adjuster. That's how it goes together. So you gotta pull this all the way out to get the chain good and loose. There, now let's try to pop this off again. There we go. Now what I think we're gonna do is there's two little Allen head bolts here, and then there's four hex head bolts up top here. I'm gonna pull all four of those off, and then we're gonna see if we can get this broke free. Right, let's see if this will come off now. All right, I feel a chain guide in here hitting. So I just pulled it up, kind of twisted it, pulled it out. All right, now all that's left to get the cylinder off is these two bolts down here, and then we're gonna get this out of here. That cylinder does not look good. The head doesn't look too bad though. Well, other than the fact that uh, this looks like muddy water in here, and it's all over everything, I would say actually it doesn't seem too bad. There's not really any, any play in the rod. This thing is not very healthy. Pretty sure the plating's coming off. So this looks like more than just a more than just a ring job. All right, so I ran into a little issue. <clears throat> when I was first looking up parts for these things, I didn't know what size this was because neither did the other guy. So I found out it's a 200, it says it on here. Come to find out, you can buy lots of cheap Chinese aftermarket cylinders for these Moto 4s. If it's a 225 or a 250 or a 350, you can find parts. The 200 is different. So another thing I can do is this looks like it's steel sleeved so I could get this punched out. So I looked on eBay and I can get an oversized piston as long as this one hasn't already been punched out. So when you look it up, they're always a metric. So what we're gonna do is a little conversion. We're gonna take our bore diameter times 25.4 and that's gonna give our, us our metric size. So I've got a set of calipers here. We're just gonna go in here, try to keep the calipers square with the bore. And it looks like we're at two inch, 640 thousandths. So this is a 67 millimeter bore. This is just a Wiseco piston kit on eBay, or on Amazon. Uh, it says it's a half a millimeter oversized to 67 and a half millimeters. So, so this is a standard bore. So really we can send this to the machine shop, get it freshened up by an oversized piston and not have this thing all jerry-rigged to heck. So I think we are gonna go get this punched out. I'm gonna order an oversized piston. I'm gonna get a gasket kit for this. New piston, new gasket set. Let's get this thing cleaned up. All right guys, so we got our gasket set in. 
and uh, I had got my piston in. This is half a millimeter over, which is 20 thou. And uh, we sent this to the machine shop to get punched out. So it is beautifully machined and honed. So really there's gonna be almost no prep to this. I do wanna scrape a little more of the gaskets off. I got it cleaned up in the parts washer, but I didn't scrape anything before I sent it to the machine shop. Uh, this O-ring here went over top of this and this groove in here. The piston kit came with some instructions um, on how to orient the piston when you put it in and how to put the rings on, which is all pretty pretty normal. Uh, got this on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. I'll put, put a link for the piston down below. Uh, this The cylinder is not plated. I don't do many steel sleeves just because a lot of the stuff is uh, Nicosil plated now. It's actually kind of nice. It cost me 50 bucks to get the, get the cylinder punched. Took it to the local machine shop and it was done in a couple days. Got our new circlips, got our piston, we got our new our new wrist pin and our rings. All right, so this is gonna be part of the oil ring, the oil scraper ring. And then the two thinnest rings are gonna go on either side of that. And then we've got our two other rings, our more compression rings. I think what I'm gonna do first is open up this gasket kit, get everything laid out in an organized fashion. Then we're gonna go back over to the machine and pull out the old piston that's in it right now. I think to keep this video shorter, I'm gonna make a separate video, but we are gonna go through the head and we're gonna tear that apart and put new valve seals in it and get all that stuff cleaned up. But for this video, we're just gonna do a top end because if, if your machine was already running, then hopefully your head's in decent shape. That's everything laid out. So let's go get the old piston off and uh, let's get all these surfaces here cleaned up. All right, so I'm gonna try to do this with a camera and flashlight in the way. So we gotta get a circ clip out so we can tap the pin out of here. A new one doesn't, tap in they should just slide in but usually these old ones here you need to persuade a little bit with a hammer and there's this reverse shifter here on this side so i don't really want to pound it out that way i kind of want to pound it out this way because i can get a hammer on that side of the piston so i'm going to pop this circle clip out so i can get on this side and start tapping it out i just have a rubber band on this this timing chain guide just to keep it out of the way so you guys can see but i'm just going to use a pick and go in this little window right here and kind of try to get it wiggled out. All right, I got it started. If you drop this down in the motor, then, then you're gonna start doing some fishing. So it would be bad if that falls down in there. So make sure you have that out. But now I'm gonna get a hammer and a punch and start tapping this pin out. That's actually one of the easier ones I've done. All right, these four strokes don't have any bearings in on the wrist pin. So we got that out of there. I'm gonna take the timing chain, kind of set it back down in this hole to get it out of the way so we can start getting this, this gasket off of here. I'm gonna stick the rod all the way down to the bottom so I don't have to dick with it too much. Slide the timing chain down in there. I'm gonna take a rag and kind of pack in this hole to try to keep any of the, the gasket shavings out of the bottom end. It looks like there's an O-ring over here. Pop that out and then I just take a scraper blade. Kind of get under a corner. Now that the heavy stuff is off there, I'm just gonna go kind of scrape it a little better till the whole thing looks kind of shiny. So we got this surface cleaned up, got the bottom there cleaned up pretty decent, and we got that cleaned up pretty good. Next step is we're gonna put the new piston on the rod um, how I like to do this is, all right, so there's an arrow right there that's gonna go towards the exhaust. Now, I've got way more room on the wheeler on that side there than I do over here just because of that shifter and stuff. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna put this circlip in on the bench, and then I don't need to try to put it in and risk dropping it down in there. So let's get this circlip put in and then put it on the rod. 
So I was gonna show you guys how I put that in there, but I forgot to press record. So you're not gonna get to see that, but we're gonna go with the oil ring right here, and we're gonna put that on first. The oil ring goes in this very bottom groove in the piston. So we're just gonna kind of spread that over the top, get that on there. Voila. Um, you wanna make sure that they're not overlapping at the seam. You wanna make sure that they're, they're just butt up against each other instead of overlapping. Now we've got these two thin rings and these do not have a specific direction other than that they go on this, this oil ring. So I'm gonna start the tail of this down in here and on the bottom side, closest to the bottom of the skirt. I'm gonna start it on that side. So I'm gonna take the, this tip of it and kind of get it started in there. And then I'm just gonna kind of roll it around. All right, that ring is on. I'm gonna do the same thing for this one, but just gonna go on the top side, get it started. All right, now my gaps are here and here, and that's too close. I want them about 180 degrees apart. So I'm just gonna take the gap on one and spin it around. So I got a, a gap here and I have a gap here. So right there is my two gaps, which is close enough. All right, so that ring is on. Now in our handy dandy imestrichens here, the lighter colored ring is for the top. The second ring is black. So, all right, I think they're talking about the outside of the ring. So this one is definitely lighter on the outside. This one is just all one color. So I'm gonna put the plated one on the top and then the beefier one down at the bottom. And it feels like this ring will fit in either slot, but now I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a T stamped on it and then a number 50. Those don't really mean much other than the fact that you want those positioned up. So I'm gonna start with ring number two and get that started. I'm just gonna stuff it in the first ring groove first. And then I'm gonna jump it down to the second one. So I'm trying to get this tail down in the second groove. So this end here, I'm just gonna kind of push out to try to give me a little more slop and to try to help swell the ring open a little bit. You definitely wanna kind of take it slow cause you don't wanna break a ring. Here we go. All right, so that ring's on there. Now, same thing for this top ring. It has a T and a number 50 on it. Has, that's gonna go up towards the spark plug. Now we have all of these together. And then when we go to put it on, we're gonna kind of stagger all the gaps. So the second ring has a gap right here by my thumb and this top ring here, I'm gonna kind of put over here and I'm gonna try to put the oil rings here and here. So it'll kind of be like a peace sign. All right, so we got the circlet bin on the side that we have the least amount of room to work on. We have our rings on. So we are going to put a little bit of oil in each side of this here. And then we're gonna dip our wrist pin in some oil. And then we're just gonna stick it over the rod, slide it in get this other clip put in. All right, so I got oil on my wrist pin. I'm gonna stick the arrow here forward towards the exhaust. And then I'm just gonna kind of set it in here. And we're just gonna shove that in until it's past our little groove there for the circlip. And then we're gonna put the circlip in. I may or may not show you this cause I, I don't know a good way to do it. So I fight it every time, but let's see. So I'm gonna try to start this end first and then work with the top end around that window. So I'm gonna kinda kind of push it in, use a little screwdriver and kind of wedge it up against that window while pushing in on it. Pushing in with my thumb and pulling down with the screwdriver. Hey. 
All right, it's almost all the way in. The top right here is not pushed in. So I'm just gonna kind of push. There we go. So really, now we are ready to put the base gasket on and then we are gonna start putting all the knock pins in the case with all the O-rings. And then we're gonna lube up the cylinder and slide it on. The gasket right here with a steel ring in it, that is gonna be our head gasket. So we're not gonna use that right now, but this is our base gasket. So I'm gonna go throw this on the motor quick. The next thing is I need to know where these knock, pin, knock pins go. So this is part Zella's website and I love them for all their, their pictures. So this is their home screen. I'm gonna click on Yamaha. I'm gonna go over here to ATV. This is a 1985 and it is a Moto 4. So now I'm gonna open that up. Now I'm gonna look for cylinder and it shows me a picture. So if you look on this, there's an O-ring, there's the pin, and then there's a line that goes up through it and it actually goes to that back corner of that gasket and then up into the cylinder. So in that back corner of the gasket, which is on the intake side away from the, the timing chain, that needs an O-ring with that pin. All right, this microfish is actually wrong. Um, only because if I look at the base of the cylinder here, this hole and this hole here are both drilled out for these pins to go in. See how there's a, a ledge down in there, but this one and this one don't have that. So there's no way a pin can go in these. So that knock pin goes in each one of these here, closest to the, the timing chain groove. This picture down here in the microfish shows the O-ring, a pin, one of these knock pins, and then over there into that corner. So that's not right, but the O-ring goes on that side over there because it goes over right over here in that little cavity. So we're gonna stick the O-ring there but the knock pin is gonna go in both of these holes here. So I'm gonna set the O-ring in there, but I'm gonna put the knock pins come in there. There might be enough there to hold it. So we're gonna go set that over there. All right, I'm gonna go set these pins in the case. Now on the bottom of the, the cylinder here, we need to replace this O-ring that we pulled out and the Vertex kit did come with one of those. I'm gonna just lightly coat it with oil. Slide it over the top. I'm gonna to kind of wipe the oil off this surface and the surface on the crankcase because you don't want this surface to have any kind of oil on it. The gaskets kind of have like a, like a gasket sealer built into it. So after you run a first heat cycle, the gasket sealer kind of turns liquidy a little bit and it melts and it sticks to these surfaces. That's why they're so hard to get scraped off because that stuff had liquefied and then stuck to the surface. And if there's oil in there, it might inhibit that uh, sealing. So we're gonna get that cleaned up a little bit, get all these surfaces dry, and then we're gonna, well, we'll just do it right now. We're gonna take some oil and go inside this cylinder, kind of give it a little coat. If you didn't get your cylinder punched out to 20 over, or you didn't get it bored, you would wanna hone it just to get some of this cross hatching in there that you see but mine was punched and they honed it while it was there. So that is gonna be good enough. All right, we're gonna leave this other chain guide out of here for right now, but we have this chain guide in here. The timing chain is shoved down in the hole because we have enough room up above here for the magnet to reach down in and grab it. So we're gonna take our cylinder, kind of get it oriented the correct way. Make sure your rings haven't really moved. Your ring end gaps are kind of where they need to be. That looks good. So now we're just gonna do this one ring at a time. All right, I think I have all the rings started. All right. 
I just want to get that started down in the case. All right. Sweet. Now this O-ring, I want to make sure we don't pinch it when we get it down on there. So I want to make sure it's actually down in that groove. And there's not much of a groove. I'm going to try to be a little extra careful on that. All right, it's started on both the knock pins on the other side. All right, I think that's kind of what we wanted. All right, so now I'm gonna take the chain guide here and I'm gonna get it started. It goes in on this side here. Um, the side with the bigger ball on it, that one's got a pretty decent sized ball right here compared to this one. The bigger side goes down in the bottom and there's a little like U-shaped channel down in here on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this one back and then pull the chain out so I can get this one here fished down in. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna stick these two bolts in so that the, that'll kind of hold the cylinder down and I'm gonna roll this over a couple times and make sure nothing's hanging up. All right, that's not very tight or anything. I just wanna be able to roll this over slowly. And that feels pretty good. So I am done with this. So we are going to uh, drop that back down in. So the next thing I'm gonna do is rebuild the head, put new valve seals and stuff in it. If you guys wanna watch that, I'll have that video at the end of this one. All right, so this knock pin over here, I set in here. I kind of did a process of elimination. I can't get it out. But that one's got that uh, flat O-ring looking thing on it. This one just had the bigger hole. These two are normal size holes. So that looks like a good place for the knock pins. Now, what I want to do is, all right, so we had that down in there until I just took it out. I think we can get away with leaving this in here. The thing is, I want to pull this chain up out and put that back down in there since I just undid that. Just drop the chain down in there and take my new gasket, lay that on there. Maybe I want to take that big knock pin out and push it in through the top because that didn't want to go, that gasket didn't really want to go over this O-ring. So let's try it this way. All right, it looks like some of that O-ring needs to stick out over the top in order to seal into the head. I think we can slide this head on there. Oh shit, I'm a dummy. I should not have put that cam sprocket on there yet. Oh well, I'm not a professional. For some reason, I feel like I took this tensioner out through the top, but I don't remember. I wonder if this will go on better this way. Well, that's kind of working. I don't like that. Okay, so this O-ring does not go in this hole right here. So I do need to have this O-ring shoved way in there. All right, now let's try that again. So it looks like that's supposed to happen. And I don't know if you can tell, but it looks like this, uh, that chain slider goes up underneath the shelf in the head. It seems like it fits in there well. So I'm just gonna leave that there. It does rock a little bit still. I think it's standing up on that O-ring over on that side. We are going to just keep our eye on that as we torque the head down. All right, so I'm kind of skipping a couple steps. Um, I have the bolts in the top, the head bolts, the cylinder bolts. I've got those in there started and kind of snug. And then I kind of got ahead of myself and was like, oh, I'm going to get it timed. And then I realized it might have been better to actually get everything torqued down. But I'm already this far, so I'm just going to get the timing chain put on and get it timed. I'm not going to put the timing chain tensioner in it until I get everything torqued down. But since we're right here, there's a plug that you got to pull out down here. And then there's a little hash mark on the flywheel. I pulled the recoil off so I could put a, a wrench on the nut down here that the flywheel grabs onto. And I've got the chain fished out of there. Just to make sure I was on the right mark, I didn't see any other marks on the flywheel, but I did pull the plug out and looked down the plug hole and I do see the spark plug sitting up there. So I'm pretty confident it's at TDC. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of eyeball it, kind of hold it up to the top. And it looks like this chain link right here looks like this gap is gonna be kind of towards the top. 
if I kind of spread it out fairly evenly. So if I know that, then that means I know a tooth, the very top tooth needs to go in here on this flat. So I think we stick it on here like show. As long as I didn't just accidentally look at the wrong mark. Kind of get the cam to rotate a little bit so that lines up. So see how I have this free play in here? What you can do is simulate the chain tensioner somehow. And I've got a used intake valve here. I'm just gonna slide it down this hole and push on that on that chain tensioner and that's going to take all the slop out of that chain just by pushing pressure in on it so that should simulate what it looks like and i'm pretty much lined up here there's a, a little casting right here that needs to line up with this mark right here um i did show you that i put this bolt on already don't do that if you're watching this before you do yours because uh you're gonna have to pull it back off again and then i'm gonna go back to doing what i should have done before i did this which is uh, get those head bolts all torqued up. All right, so I don't really know how this works, but I'm gonna kind of explain to you guys how I think it works. So we've got the actual pusher, and there's your main spring, and then there's another little teeny tiny yellow spring in here, and then you can see right through that. And that's what that plastic cap does as it goes on top of there and seals all this off. So if I take this and I squeeze it all the way down, you see how that right there is sticking out? So if I were to put that in there so that little tit right there was flush, then I know it has at least that much play for the chain before it actually bottoms out. But I'm not really compressing that yellow spring in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. That yellow spring takes a lot to move. So I think what I'm gonna do is thread this piece right here all the way in until that gets about flush maybe, somewhere in there, maybe a little shy of flush. And then I'm gonna tighten up this jam nut, screw the cap on, cause that'll give me lots of spring pressure. And it'll also give me lots of room. It'll give me a little bit of room for chain slap if it ends up getting any. This isn't like a high performance, uh, cam chain tensioner because it doesn't lock a lot of these ones like as you squeeze them in you'll hear them click and then they'll they'll only want to go out not back in again because that's how that little thing right there works i don't know that's how i'm gonna do it if i find out uh, anything different then i would let you know in the cam chain video so as promised that is just below flush right there i have this jam nut tight and i'm going to uh Thread this cap on. I'm gonna probably snug this up a little bit. There's just an O-ring. There's an O-ring on the bottom of this nut that's supposed to seal off with the cylinder. And there's an O-ring on the bottom of this that's supposed to seal off against that nut since there's nothing there that's gonna keep it from, uh, from leaking oil. So, um, also, I don't, I don't remember if I said it or not, but I had all these uh, head bolts and stuff all torqued to spec before I did the tensioner. And uh, this website says somewhere, uh, flange bolt, 16 foot pounds. So I torqued these to 16 foot pounds and these here to 14. I actually just winged it on these. But um, I got those two little bolts down there tight and I got the plug put back in. I'm gonna leave the recoil off for a minute. But uh, we are gonna put these uh, covers back on for the valve uh, inspection windows. And then I think we're gonna drain the oil because this still has that nasty ass oil in it. And then while that's draining, I think we're gonna put the exhaust and the carburetor boot back on.
This vent line gets routed up the frame. I'm probably just gonna tuck this out of the way for now just so it doesn't get lost. Set the throttle cable and slide up there with it. I'm gonna pull this airbox boot kind of down out of the way. Now it looks like these are just studs in the carb body. So we're gonna take and break these nuts loose. And, uh, oh, we got the choke cable here too. All right, we're gonna turn the choke on. And that'll kind of help hold the plunger on that so it doesn't spring apart and get lost. All right, I'm gonna pop the carburetor off. The reason I took it off here and not here is because we gotta clean this carburetor anyways. Now down to the exhaust. We got two Allen head bolts down here. I'm gonna get those broke loose. Of course, the second thing I wanna take off of this thing is all stripped. All right, that's off. So it looks like there's a joint right here. Break that clamp loose. All right, now 